parasha vayelech. Hallelujah, blessed is the name of Yeshua. Great is his name, wonderful in the whole earth. He is worthy to receive honor and glory. Our King of kings and our Lord of lords, our beloved Yeshua, the one who rescued us from darkness, who has brought us to this marvelous light, he who is our life and blesses us in all things and directs us, the Good Shepherd. I am the Good Shepherd, Yeshua said. Do you remember the psalm? Yehu is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. There is where our beloved shepherd is, Yeshua, the one whom we have recognized as our shepherd, and we have become one of his sheep. To him be all the glory and the honor, and we give you the welcome in his powerful name. I gather with you in the powerful name of Yeshua the Messiah, and we say to Yeshua, be welcome, Yeshua, be welcome to his Holy Spirit. Be welcome to teach us in this time that we have set apart to hear him and about him. The parasha of this week is called Vayelech. It begins in Deuteronomy chapter 31 to the end of the chapter. The last parashot are a bit shorter and this one particularly is one chapter but Yeshua always has treasures for us and we are antsy to hear what treasure he has for us as we read this portion. But first we are going to do a prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yeshua, for allowing us to come to this place. We thank you for your mercies, for you are a righteous judge, for you judge us and you judge the nations. And because your judgments are righteous and they must be desired, we invite you, Yeshua, that you would reveal yourself to us as the righteous judge so that we might understand your judgments and invite them, Yeshua, that you might restore the earth and restore our lives, that you might restore our countries to a place where they are free of guilt, where you have forgiven or judged. We ask you, Lord, in this time that as it becomes shorter, that repentance would be given over to many, for your repentance liberates your forgiveness, and we give you thanks, Lord. Please give repentance to the nations, to the leaders of the nations, to the presidents, Lord, to the humble workers, to all. Every one of us needs the precious gift of repentance in order to enter the wonderful blessing of forgiveness. We ask you for our families that you might pour out of this repentance, that there might be conviction of sin and that they might repent of their wicked ways. Everyone who is walking separated from you in your great mercy and only you can do so. We give you thanks, Lord, for this great and immense sacrifice that you did for us, for taking our burdens, our pains, our sins, for being obedient to the end, to even unto death, that we might be blessed with such great blessing to enter into this new covenant. We give you many thanks for this, Yeshua, and that your light might shine in a powerful way in this moment here in Jerusalem and in all the homes of each one of the men of good will who seek your ways and fear you and seek the truth, Yeshua. For those who do not conform to the lies of this world, but know that there is a wonderful truth that can liberate all of humanity. Thank you for making your light to shine to them and for making your light to shine through them, Yeshua. And the prophecy says that the salvation of Yerushalayim will be lit up like a torch and all the nations will come to the mountain of the Lord. And we know that great blessing is coming to Jerusalem, Yeshua. Yeshua, if the blessing of the Azusa Street was great, and if the revival of Toronto was so great, and the blessing of Valparaiso was great, how much more greater is the blessing of the great revival that you are bringing to Jerusalem? This that will be lit up like a lamp, like a torch, that our prayer would not cease to seek for the peace of Jerusalem, so that there might be peace in within the walls of Jerusalem from the Prince of Peace, and we give him no rest until the Lord establishes Jerusalem, Jerusalem as a praise 
praise on the earth. We ask you that you make Yerushalayim as a praise on the earth. We ask you, please, that you would come, Yeshua, now and enter into the place where we are as our teacher, as our rabbi, as our professor, and that you would teach us concerning the Torah portion of Deuteronomy of Vayelech. Show us the treasures that you have for us in this hour and through this portion. And we give you thanks for hearing this prayer and for attending to the ear of your people and for spending this time with us. We sit at your feet, Master, to hear your teaching in the powerful name of Yeshua. Amen. Hallelujah, beloved brethren. Kavod le Yeshua. Do you know what that means? Kavod le Yeshua. Kavod is translated as glory. Kavod le Yeshua means glory to Yeshua. I begin to read from the first verse of Deuteronomy 31. This in literal English means, And went Moshe and spoke at the words these to all Israel. Vayelech, the name of the parasha, and went. Vayelech. Let us therefore remember we're coming to the end of the book of Deuteronomy. Israel is preparing to cross the Yarden. Moshe is finishing the last things that he must do in his life and giving the instructions, his last ones, preparing to be united with his people, with his forefathers. I read from verse 1 again. And went Moshe and spoke at the words these to all Israel. And he said to them, Son of of a hundred and twenty years I today know I can longer go out and come in. Also Yehu has said to me, Not you shall cross over at Yarden this. Yehu your Elohim, he crosses over before you. He will destroy at the nations these from before you, and you shall dispossess them. Yehoshea, he crosses over before you, just as has said Yehu, and will do Yehu to them as he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, and their land when he destroyed them, and will give over them Yehu to you, that you may do to them according to every commandment which I have commanded you. Be strong and of good courage, not to fear nor be afraid of them, for Yehu your Elohim, he the one who goes with you, not he will leave you nor forsake you. And called Moshe Yehoshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of good courage, for you must go et with the people this to the land which has sworn Yehu to their fathers to give them, and you shall cause to inherit it them. And Yehu, he the one who goes before you, he will be with you, not he will leave you, nor forsake you, not to fear nor be dismayed. Here Moshe is giving the instructions to Yehosha, but further on, it will be Elohim himself who will speak to Yehosha. This we find in the book of Yehosha called Joshua in English, which is the following book after Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law, the Torah, which commanded you, Moshe, my servant, not to turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever, wherever you go. Not shall depart book of the Torah this from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make prosperous at your way, then you will have good success. The message that Moshe gives to Yehoshea is that exactly that he should be strong and be courageous to keep the Torah. And this is not an old message unto us, but it is alive today and each one of us must be strong and courageous to keep the Torah according to the direction of the Ruach HaKodesh. For Yeshua is our teacher, our master, who takes us to keep the Torah, especially if we are new and we're in the transition of going from a life according to the pagans and the nations going towards a life that is holy in the commandments of the Lord, then this change especially must be directed by the Spirit of the Lord so that it might be a change that doesn't destroy but builds up. 
just like when we speak truth outside of its proper time, it can cause much damage to the one who hears it and even to yourself. All of us must have some experience in this. When we say things that are true, but we are not obeying the direction of our Elohim, then much damage is caused. For example, when you say is when you do. And to do is a greater level of communication than saying. Therefore, to do is also a way of saying. It's a way to impart. And we must do it according to the way the Lord guides us. And there are some things that are more important than others. This is why the Torah is called instructions. The change in the life of a person of coming out of the darkness, going into the light of the commandments of the Lord, must be directed by the Lord. Of course, there are some things that are more important than others. Therefore, there are things that the Lord requires us to do, and there are things that he gives us to do little by little. The reason? He knows it. Many times, if the change is brusque, a home can be destroyed. Can you see it? Therefore, the Lord is the one who wants to take control of this, for he did not come to destroy, but to build. It is true that you go through periods of enmity and disagreement in the home, as Yeshua himself said. He said he came to bring enmity and disagreement within a home. The house will be divided, and even the prophecies speak of this. But this division is a battle and a process, and it is something temporary. And this is what we must embrace as the truth. For the Lord is doing a work, for he is faithful to do it, and because light is more powerful than darkness. Therefore, here it is crucial to follow the direction of the Lord. The Lord then says, Be strong and of good courage to Yehoshea or Yehosha. We're not exactly sure what was the old way of pronouncing his name. It was either Yehoshea or Yehosha, or Yehoshea or Yehusha. For the name of the son of Nun, who will direct the children of Israel, begins with Yehu, as many names in Hebrew, as I have said previously, like Netanyahu. Yermiyahu. This is a name with which the Lord manifested himself to the children of Israel. I say it as a commentary so you will understand that I am speaking of the same person. Yehusha, Yehoshea. Therefore, the time that we are living now with so many difficulties, with so much darkness, to be strong and be courageous is an instruction that is alive for us today. First and foremost, to keep the commandments and not depart from the Torah of the Lord. And also to shine and make to shine the truth and the wisdom of the Most High in our days. In these days where the enemy has taken control of the mass media and now truth is hard to find for the manipulation of news continues to try to control our thoughts and our desires. Therefore, that we would have great courage and be strong to call things by their name that are evil and wicked and not do it like the press and the mass media and the culture to accept just anything but we will call it by its name wicked is wickedness what is right to do the lord has directed us and has taught us through this torah and we know that it is the right thing to do it is righteous it is what pleases the lord and what this world and the press is imparting or teaching that we might have the wisdom and the strength that we would be strong and courageous to speak out and say this is wrong. Beloved brethren, let us not change the meaning of the words as this world has been doing. There is a part in scripture that says, Woe to those who say that good is evil and that evil is good. We're almost to the end of the Torah. We have read and advanced throughout all the portions of the Torah. In some cases, we couldn't cover certain verses because of time, but we understand the message of the Lord. What is evil is evil. What is prohibited to do, what is sin, it has been defined in this book, and we have learned it with joy. We cannot accept what the press does, changing the values that our Elohim, the Most High, has given to us. Let us therefore be strong and courageous to say, this is wrong and I do not accept it, without caring about 
criticism, for our Lord is our shield. But brethren, it is essential in this time to live a life that keeps the instructions that we have read. For from that place is where protection comes that we will receive from the Lord. And the protection of the Lord comes from the covenant. And the covenant conditions us to keep the commandments and walk in his paths. And that's the path that we're taking. Beloved brethren, I tell you, be strong and courageous, very courageous, to keep and do according to all the words that the servant of Elohim, Moshe, order us to keep. And that which is wrong from now on will be called by its name we're gonna call wickedness wickedness we're no longer gonna accept that which the press is doing accepting atrocities and sins as if they were right you and Yeshua is all that is necessary to win we're not going to lose a battle if we go under the command of Yeshua continuing look at how beautiful this is verse 9 so wrote Moshe Aleftav the Torah this and delivered it to the priest the Kohanim the sons of Levi who bore it the ark of the covenant of Yehu and to all the elders of Israel and commanded Moshe them saying at the end of seven years at the appointed time in year of the release at feast of tabernacles when comes all israel to appear at before yehu your elohim in the place which he chooses here it says to appear before the face of yehu your elohim in the place which he chooses you shall read at the torah this before all israel in their ears. This verse again reveals that Yeshua, the Aleph Tav, is the Torah. And it says, You will proclaim Aleph Tav, the Torah. He is the Torah. He is the word, the Davar. It is wonderful that we might see in this commandment how the Lord himself, the Elohim himself, reveals that Aleph Tav is what we're going to proclaim when we read the Torah before all of Israel. All the men must present themselves before Jerusalem three times a year in Pesach, in Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. And aside from this, there is another commandment that says, once every seven years, the land will have rest. Here they called it the year of release, in Hebrew is Shmita, Hashnat Shmita, and it is a time where you do not plant, but you give to the land rest. And in that year, where it begins the rest of the year, it begins on the seventh month, and not in the beginning of the year, simply because this is where you finish the harvest of the grape and the olives on the seventh month, and this is the month of the tabernacles. Therefore, once every seven years, you will read the entire of the Torah that Moshe has written and you will read it here in Jerusalem before all the people and verse 12 says gather together at the people men and women and little ones and the stranger who within your gates that they may hear that they may learn and to fear at Yehu your Elohim and carefully observe to to do at all the words of the Torah this and their children who not have known it may hear and learn to fear at Yehu your Elohim as long day as long as you live in the land which you cross at the Yarden there to possess therefore Moshe orders that all the people will gather together and all the people hear the Torah this in itself is a revelation the Torah it is instructed to be read once every seven years before all the people there are women there are children there are strangers in their midst of all the different types of social classes and cultures all the people hear the Torah and this reveals to us that the language of the Torah is simple the Torah is not written in a language that only the most cultured and understanding and wise can understand but the Torah is written in a language that can anyone can understand including the children the wall to understand the Torah is spiritual and not intellectual there is is a spiritual blindness that can make a person not to understand what the commandment says this does not mean that the person is evil because all of us in a part have this blindness or if you want to call it the revelation flows when the spirit 
gives it. If it does not flow from the Spirit, then there is no revelation. Therefore, the message that Elohim is given throughout a commandment or throughout the Torah can only be understood in the cases where Elohim himself frees and delivers revelation to you. Now, you don't have to be great or older. The adults have the tendency to believe that children, they're not capable of understanding this, but this is a great mistake, a grave error. Children have a greater capacity of receiving and understanding a message than adults have. Yes, it is so. And the person who has a lot of knowledge also has the tendency to think that you need to have a lot of knowledge in order to understand what the Torah is saying, and they tend to discard the rest of the people. But it is not so. The one who has less knowledge, the one who has the most simple heart, the one who has the most humble heart, the one who has the heart more like a child, this is a person that can receive more revelation as they read the scriptures. It is worth to mention that one of the most important things in order to understand scripture and to receive revelation is love. One day the Lord told me, without love you cannot receive anything. When you seek revelations, you need love in order to receive them. If it's through the scriptures as you read the Torah, Love is essential. Love to what, you might ask yourself? Love to truth. It is necessary, very necessary, to have love for truth. Without love for truth, you cannot receive revelation. But this is also a condition that we love Elohim of truth more than we love truth itself. For you can love truth for egotistical reasons, but we must walk in the paths, the ancient paths, in the ways of the Elohim, the Elohei Israel, in order to receive of his Torah. Therefore, we understand that the Torah is written for people who are simple, people who do not know how to read, because many of the ones who gathered to hear the Torah in the Feast of Tabernacles did not know how to read. They were not necessarily literate even in those days. Therefore, it is made for everyone to hear it and keep the commandments. The other thing that this shows is something that I had previously mentioned in one of the previous portions, is that there is a relationship between the Torah and rest. This personally, I lived it and I discovered it having to read the Torah portion every weekend. And as I did it, I saw how my life was affected and greatly blessed every Shabbat when I read the portion of the Torah. And I asked myself, why does this happen? There is no commandment that says you have to read the Torah every Shabbat. But one day I came to an understanding that there is a relationship between the Shabbat and the Torah. And it is exactly in this commandment where it orders us to read the Torah commands in the year of release, in the year of rest, in the year that is a sabbatical. The entire of the Torah here in Jerusalem. And how do we keep this commandment? Well, there is a witness and a testimony that can give is that the accounts that the Jewish religion has of the seven years of Shemitah. And the testimony is that if you look back to all the years that coincide with this recounting, for example, in the year 2000 was the year of Shemitah, and then the year 2007, that is the account, that's the counting, and the year 2014, and I'm talking about the seventh year of these years, the beginning of Shemitah. If you count backwards, and I have seen brethren who have brought this forth, they have found that there are a great amount of events have come to pass in these years. It is very impressive to see all the falls of the stock market as they have been in sequence through these seven years falling ever since since 1973 to 80 to 87. I can say in the Ruach there exists something special with the account, this type of counting, that it seems that most types of Judaism accept as the year of Shemitah. And if you follow this cycle, they would cost that the seventh month of the year 2014 would begin the year of Shemitah of the rest of the land, and immediately after comes the year of Jubilee, where everyone returns 
to their inheritance. Therefore, I say that you must pay a lot of attention, for we are in the time, as I am editing this recording, we are standing on the seventh month, and you have to be very cautious. You know we have seen many times when the Lord does judgment, or exalts, or even restores in the cycle of the Shemitah, of the rest for the land, of the release of the land. It is very probable that great events will come in the year of Shemitah, very great events. If you go back and look at the history, as I have said, during the cycle, of Shemitah on the seventh month to the seventh month within this many world events have come to pass including especially at the end of Shemitah for example the fall of the towers in New York was at the end of the year of Shemitah so let us for be sensitive to this and continue with our sight placed on our Lord Yeshua continuing verse 14 and said Yehu to Moshe, Behold, approach the days when you must die. Call at Yehoshea and present yourselves in the tabernacle of meeting, that I may inaugurate him. So when Moshe and Yehoshea and presented themselves in the tabernacle of meeting, and appeared Yehu at the tabernacle in a pillar of cloud, and stood the pillar of cloud above the door of the tabernacle, and said Yehu to Moshe, Behold, you will rest or sleep with your fathers, and will rise people these and play the harlot with the gods of the foreigners of the land where it goes there among them and they will forsake me and break at my covenant which I made with them. It is not that the covenant will be annulled but it will be trespassed that is the sense and understanding continuing verse 17 and shall be aroused my anger against them in day that and i will forsake them and i will hide my face from them and they shall be devoured destroyed and shall befall them evils many and troubles so that they will say in day that have not because not our Elohim among us come upon evils these, and I surely will hide my face in day that, because of all the evil which they have done, in that they have turned to God's other. Therefore now write down for yourselves et song this, and teach it et to the sons of Israel. Put it in their mouths that may be for me song this, a witness against the sons of Israel. When I have brought them to the land of which I swore to their fathers flowing with milk and honey, Honey, and they have eaten and filled themselves and grown fat and they will turn to God's other and serve them and they will spurn me and break at my covenant and it shall be when have come upon him evils many and troubles that will testify song this against them as a witness for not it will be forgotten in the mouths of his descendants for I know at the inclination plan of which he does today even before I have brought them to to the land of which I swore. Therefore wrote Moshe et song this day that and taught it et to the sons of Israel. And he inaugurated Yehoshea son of Nun and said, Be strong and of good courage, for you shall bring et the sons of Israel into the land of which I swore to them, and I will be with you. So when it was completed, Moshe writing et the words of Torah this in a book when they were finished, that commanded Moshe Moshe et the Levites who bore the Ark of the Covenant of Yehu, saying, Take et book of the Torah this, and put it beside the Ark of the Covenant of Yehu, your Elohim, that it may be there against you as a witness. For I know et your rebellion, and et your neck stiff. Today, while I am yet alive with you this day, rebellious you have been against Yehu, then much more how after my death. Therefore now Moshe is giving a new instruction which is to place the book of the Torah, the scroll of the Torah, next to the Ark of the Covenant. And this comes to be part of the testimony. Do you remember? The testimony is in the most holy place, the Holy of Holies, in the Tent of Meeting. And there the Ark of the Covenant is, and the Mercy Seat, which is a top part of the Ark of the Covenant, and inside would be the 
two tablets of the covenant, a little bit of manna which the Lord ordered the children of Israel to keep some of it for the generations to come. The rod of Aaron would also be there and the book of the Torah. All of this is the testimony and these things show us that what the Torah says is true. These things are very important and they show us that this is a proof that everything that has been told to us is true and therefore at the end of times will come to the air will come to show the ark of the covenant as he has shown not to one or two but to various people they have received it the Lord spoke to a brother and said, When the Ark of the Covenant comes to light, then the coming of the Lord is near. Therefore prepare yourself, for the testimony can be seen in some periods of time where the children of Israel crossed the Jordan, it will come to pass that the book of the Torah will be lost, and even the Ark of the Covenant will be taken by the Philistines at some future time later on. But regardless of all this, and regardless that the press does not know where the Ark of the Covenant is standing, the Lord has kept it in a secure place. Brethren have been able to see it, and this has been a testimony that everything that is written in the Torah is true. The Ark of the Covenant is a testimony that Yeshua also, our wonderful Messiah, poured his blood one day and it came to fall upon the mercy seat. And therefore it is called the testimony. It is not just a testimony of what happened with Moshe in the desert, but also what happened to Yeshua. Commandments concerning the Torah. Well, the greatest commandment, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your Elohim, the Lord is one. And you will love the Lord your Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and what follows. And these words which I command you today, you shall speak of them in your home while you're sitting and on the way. You will teach them to your children. You will tie them as a sign on your hands, and you will place them between your eyes. The greatest commandment is related to the Torah itself. To read it every seven years in Jerusalem, to place it on the side of the testimony that every king should have a copy of the scroll of the Torah and meditate on it day and night. Do you understand? The Torah is Yeshua himself, for he is the word, he is the verb, he is Hadavar in Hebrew. This is the sign between the eyes, is the name that you have between the eyes, those who have been sealed. Of course, this is spiritual. The things of the kingdom are really more tangible and more true than the physical things. I continue on verse 28. Gather to me at all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak in their hearing at words these, and to call to witness against them at heaven and at earth. For I know that after my death, because utterly you will become corrupt and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you and will befall you evil in latter the days. Because you will do at evil in the sight of Yehu to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. And spoke Moshe in the hearing of all the assembly of Israel at the words of the song this until they were ended. I want to note that Moshe is speaking to the children of Israel that these some things are going to come to pass to them after they cross the Yarden and that they will rebel. But here is a prophecy in verse 29 that it's not speaking to this time, but in the latter times. The Acharit Hayamim. And will befall you evil in latter the days, in the end of days, because you will do at evil in the sight of Yehu to to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Therefore, the latter days, the end days, the end times, in those times, the children of Israel will make the Lord angry by the work of their hands. And I don't want you to think just of the Jews. In the previous portion, I spoke that kneeling before idols, which will be one of the reasons why a judgment will come in the end of times, is practically there's some absent in the land of Israel. For the Israel of today, the state of Israel, there is no kneeling or prostrating before idols. But let us remember that Israel is greater than Yehuda. Yehuda is just one tribe. 
There are twelve tribes of Israel, and the tribe that has the blessing of the firstborn is Ephraim, and Ephraim is the one that is dispersed throughout the nations and fills all the nations. The Jews have been more visible throughout centuries, and therefore it has been easier for the enemy to persecute them. But Ephraim has not been persecuted in the same manner as Yehuda, for no one knows where Ephraim is except for the Lord, for Ephraim is all over the place, as Yaakov prophesied. So to kneel and prostrate before statues is something that is done specially outside of the land of Israel. If you want me to say it in a different manner, the greater part of Israel is outside of Israel. If there are 18 million Jews around the world and Judah is one or two tribes plus some Levites, therefore the 10 tribes that are dispersed throughout the nations must be thousands of millions. Brethren, Ephraim means fruitful. The tribe with more people has always been Ephraim. Most of Israel is outside of the land of Israel, and Yehuda has returned as a pioneer, for the Lord decided like so. He always sends Yehuda first. Therefore, this song of Moshe, which is part of the next portion, is a witness against the children of Israel, and this is principally to the house of Ephraim, which is throughout the nations. If there's something that Yehuda has learned well, is that they cannot kneel before images or statues, that Yeshua continue teaching each one of us and revealing more concerning this. One of the more important things which Elohim has shown these things is that we might pray and intercede for others, that Yeshua might have mercy. And with this, we close this short parasha portion, giving glory to Yeshua. Thank you, Father. Thank you, I've been our beloved for teaching us concerning your wonderful Torah. Thank you for being with us. We give you thanks for all the instruction that you give, the testimony we have read, and the commandments, and all revelation that you have given to us, and in this moment, and that you will continue to give to each one of your disciples. Yeshua, we ask that you would give us an interceding heart, that we might intercede for your people, for the people you have chosen, Yeshua so that they will not make you angry with the work of their hands by kneeling before idols. We ask you that you would open the eyes of your people to the house of Israel completely, that they would not do it, that their heart would turn to you. O oh Lord, in all the nations and all around the world, you have a remnant, Yeshua. Let the remnant take a step ahead towards obeying your commandments in the powerful name name of Yeshua. We ask this and give them sensitivity to your people, to your children, that they might understand concerning your ways, that they might do your will, and they might continue following the Lamb wherever he goes. You are our Lamb. Thank you for everything you have given us. Bless each one of your children in this Shabbat. Give us more unity, more of your Ruach, more of your truth, more of your presence, more of your wisdom, more of you, Yeshua. This is what we want, and we give you thanks for hearing our prayer in the powerful name of Yeshua, the Messiah. And now I bless you with the blessing that Elohim himself orders to bless the children of Israel. Take it from you. <laughs> יאר ישועה פניו עליך ויחונקה, אשא ישועה פניו עליך ויעשם לך שלום. ואני שם שם של ישוע משיח עליך. Amen. And it means, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And I place the name of Yeshua over you in the name of Yeshua. Shalom al-Israel. Peace be over Israel. Amen and Amen.